So I oh, blowing it again. I blew it again. Yeah. But you got. We're we just going to go ahead and just transition into the Rashad pin. I like it. Commissioner's telling us to make a pick. <laughs> Let's go ahead and transfer <laughs> this over to the one six, and we'll keep the conversation going and bring the and bring Rashad Penny into it. Let's do it. All right. Well, I'm going to send my secretary up there with the card with the, my pick on it, but everyone already knows what it is because Big Co blew it. <laughs> I did blow it. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. With the sixth pick and married to the game's 2018 rookie, don't fuck it up, mock. Who do you got, Casey? You just fucked it up because it's don't mock it up before you fuck it up. Yeah, well, it's you can say it either way. <laughs> <laughs> I selected uh, Penny. Rashad. Rashad Penny, San Diego State. With this pick. Boo. Um, boo. Oh, wait, that's for the commissioner. Not, not <laughs> the, t- the team that I was selecting for has Le'Veon Bell and Devonta Freeman and DeAndre Hopkins are basically the highlights of this squad here. Yeah, he's got a couple of studs. Got Cup- Jimmy. A couple Jimmy of studs, G. and then the rest of the team is, is kind of poor. Pretty poor. Probably could have gotten away with taking DJ Moore here, but this, I, I'm sticking with my running back guys. This roster would get you at the one, 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 two draft pick, but there's a couple of there's DeAndre Hopkins and Le'Veon Bell, Devontae Freeman, and that's you get that's enough to win ball games right there. Right. That's and how it works. This, and this is how he's gone about his entire career in this league. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just two or three really good guys. The rest. We well, traded away Zeke the year he, right. we were talking about him earlier. Zeke and Le'Veon got him to all the way to the championship. Got him. Got it, traded for Nuke and and. Uh, Freeman, Freeman, which turns out to be a really decent trade too. I mean, that's yeah. One of the, he's got some studs. Diversified on his team. a little, but could Hop. have just held on to Zeke. He just went to the championship, exactly, and won. Anyway, I took Rashad Penny here. Anyway, we were debating the the fifth pick here, whether who you would take. Pre draft, I had Carry On Rojo Penny. Okay. Yep. Um. So now that this is over, and and at first you you see the draft pick go to the Seahawks. I don't like the pick. I don't like what they did. They were saying how they were thinking about taking him at 18, and they found a trade partner trade back. Now, it isn't always easy to just find a trade partner and trade no, back, as not. we all like to talk about or whatever. But, like, you could – I maybe the Patriots were going to take Rashad Penny. Yeah, maybe. It doesn't really fit the same kind of mold as Sony Michelle took and kind of, in my opinion, what the what they're trying to do up there. Um, and I just think you could have traded back. I have no problem with you taking the running back, but I just – don't see that's why my jaw dropped i mean right. i don't i just couldn't see how anybody took a running back obviously darius geis was sliding and we didn't know how far he was sliding at the time he wasn't sliding before that pick because when rashad penny goes off we're in the you know there's no other running back besides Ge- right so Saquon off. geis's slide wasn't even happening yet we when the running back gets taken and he says rashad penny I'm like, oh my God, Darius Geis is on the board, Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle's on the board. How are the the Seahawks taking Rashad Penny? That is that is must be that is their guy, right? No, and and I'm I'm not gonna really let that just take over everything and make my decision and be like, oh well, they they drafted him in the first round. It's their guy, you know. It, that's, oh, teams that, have that's, had, a, that's over everything. Yeah, teams you know? have had their guys before that weren't draft any good capital. in many, many positions. And I'm fine with the draft capital, and, and, and it, it definitely does, does. It means something. Means something, and it definitely slides my pick a little bit. And again, I, if I'm in five, I'm probably trading back, and if I'm at six, I, I might trade back as well because I don't mind having Rojo or Carry On or Penny or DJ Moore, whoever kind of falls to me, or or even Royce if I got deals are hot and heavy and good. <laughs> <laughs> um. But what? so then what I started kind of put, I didn't, didn't love the pick because of the player. And I thought you could have slid back a little bit to get him. And then for the Seahawks, right for the Seahawks. Right. And then you, you're like, Oh, your first initial reaction is always oh, the Seahawks offensive line is atrocious. They can't run the ball. It's terrible over there. Well, guess what we're about to do. Dig in. We're going to talk about some more coaching changes and what's going on over there. So, if this is if you're not into the coaching changes and all that hyperbole and all that kind of stuff, this isn't the podcast for you, and you're probably <laughs> never listening again. You're probably already tuned out. Right? Actually, if you would just tune in, we'd make you a lot better fantasy football player. Right. So they obviously go through some changes in the offseason. Daryl Bevel's finally out of there. I hate Daryl Bevel. He's I out d- of there. Didn't enjoy his play calling. I'm a 49ers fan, first and foremost. But I don't let my fanhood get in the way too much of this stuff here. <laughs> I, I, at least a try. I mean, you did just take a Seahawk. I did. So you bring in Brian Schottenheimer, who 
I, you know, I don't know a ton about Brian Schottenheimer, so I start doing a little bit of research about what his game is because it's crazy that these coaches come in here and they actually have like a system and what they've done in the past and what 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 they History. go with and how they do it. Um, <laughs> so wait, what? What they go with? Obviously, this is the son of of, uh, of a coaching legend in in Schottenheimer. Mm -hmm. We got Mr. Marty Marty Schottenheimer here. So Brian's here. His backgrounds in the Air Coriel offense, which is kind of vertical routes uh, with a power run game. So what? It, you know, you're going through here and you're, you're talking about the, the offensive line for these guys, for, for the Seahawks. They picked up Dwayne Brown late in the season, which was a great pickup for them. Obviously, the hoss of that line right now. Sure. Great maybe, pickup for them. You know, maybe the line's not quite as bad as you as you thought it was. They have some OK pieces there, but it's not it's not it's not excellent. But what, what what's going on here is is you want to take a coach and you, you made a change and, and you Pete Carroll's out there and he's talked a million times about how they need to get back to what they were doing when they were winning football games and doing it the way that Pete Carroll wants to do it, playing defense, running the ball, chomping gum and letting and letting <laughs> Russell Wilson create when he needs to create, not just having to create to survive. Pounding the rock. Right. So Brian Schottheimer, Air Coriel offense, all this. Offensive line isn't great, but you know, yeah, it's maybe yeah. it's just, could be slightly better than we thought it was um, coming into this season. So then in the fourth round, they draft Will Dissey, 6'4", 262, converted D tackle. Uh, just learning the position, not a crazy athlete, but can make some plays. What position is he playing now? He's gonna he's playing tight end, and okay. he's more of a blocking tight end. So and they draft you, a blocking tight end. You do the research on him and start reading. You just read how much he helped the Washington Huskies run game, and we all know that was a pretty prolific run game. Miles Gaskin's a freak, and they had some other good <laughs> running backs Super there. Freak. And I like I like what they're doing. So they so they picked up a tight end here. Off season they pick up uh, Ed Dixon, who mostly known as a blocking Solid tight end. Obvi obviously Olsen went down last year, and they uh, and he and Dixon, some passes. Dixon he had emerged, that one game. Dixon emerged being a half decent because I I I had bricks for hands and my you know I always that's how I always envisioned it. <laughs> He'd get wide open and it just hit him in the face mask. Uh, he had, had some decent games last year. Um, so what I start to kind of put together in my head is, is you're talking about this Air Coriel offense, power vertical scheme. You got some tight ends now who can run you in a big set. Right. Which pretty much all of Rashad Penny's runs at South Dakota, not South Dakota, San Diego State were not out of a shotgun like they were currently running over in Seattle out of more of a big set out of okay, the single the dots. out of the single back. Okay. So, you know, they're maybe just starting to gear towards, hey, I, we're, we picked up this guy. We want this guy because he runs out of these sets. We're going to – obviously, we just drafted him pretty high. They want him to be the three-down workhorse. Got a couple of blocking tight ends. Got a couple of blocking tight ends. Maybe going to, you know, get a little heavier on the on the line. A lot of people kind of going a little bit more towards this 12 or 21 package where you got two tight ends out on the field. You can slot one and right. do various things, create mismatches, all that kind of stuff. But you can also control the run game. Mm-hmm which is what the Seahawks want to do. Um, I like all that. Put Connect those dots for us so like that's, that. That's kind of basically where I'm at. When I started initially in this, I was like, I don't love the landing spot for Penny. I already didn't love Penny as much as other people love Penny, but started to kind of all, all those kind of things. Now maybe, you know, I've made sense of it in my head and put those dots together and maybe somebody completely disagrees with me because that's maybe they're not really going to be what they're doing. But Brian Schottenheimer is a guy who he's had plenty of backs with 290 plus carries in his career. Uh, usually most, most years uh, when he was an offensive coordinator, he was in the upper half of rushing attempts for his running backs. Uh, so a guy who... Wants to run the ball. He never really had a good quarterback at any spot that he landed in. He played with Favre for a year in New York, but they pretty much scrapped their whole offense to let Favre do what Favre was going to do right, right. for a year over there. He was the, the um, Rams offensive coordinator, but Bradford missed like 25 straight games when he was there. So you have uh, a bunch of nobodies playing quarterback over there. And then for uh, the Jets, outside of Favre, it was Sanchez, and they had an end of a Pennington and just – Sure. Not great quarterbacks. Sure. Uh, so, so there's a guy who has a, a history of running the ball a decent amount, yeah. taking shots down the field. And I like what they did and what they brought in. And, and 
maybe the, the line isn't as bad. Like I said, you got well, you got was, Dwayne Brown was a strong acquisition. You got Ethan Posick or Pocket. I'm not sure. Didn't grade out so well. 76 out of 77 graded players at his position, but a little bit better at run blocking. Justin Britt was a second round pick last year, actually graded out as the 17th uh, best pass blocker. A little worse in the run game, so not terrible there out of there. They picked up DJ Fluker, 17th in the run blocking uh, grade out. Um, and then Effetti is probably the most, that, that right tackle is the most up in the air spot for this, for this team. So it's, it's not. It's a bad offensive line, but it's maybe not the worst offensive line, and maybe you can get in this big package and give Russell a little bit more time and some more options of pounding the rock and doing, you know, what Penny possibly could do. Now, I like the, I still like Carry On Johnson as a player, and I think I still like Rojo as a player more than Rashad Penny, but all those things kind of connecting the dots for me. I like the way he ran the ball in college, and it seems like they're they're kind of lining up to run the ball, maybe similar, of trying to make it work for the guy they just invested a lot of money in. Oh, yeah. Which is a lot of teams don't do that. And we've seen the Seahawks win with this method before. When Marshawn Lynch was in town, good luck stopping these guys. Now, I don't think Rashad Penny's anywhere near the, mm -mm. the power game running that Marshawn Lynch is. <laughs> no way. But he can catch half decent and he true. They, they got a lot invested in him and he can be a three down guy so i'm 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 taking penny with this pick and i'm not upset about it well can i just say how impressed i am that you were able to do that whole thing right there without bugging out because big co just pushed his chair back is <laughs> over here doing these back stretches and i'm oh, trying God. not to bug out lower back issues though <laughs> i'm standing up right now i'm standing One, up if, if we keep this thing together long enough this this podcast will end up on video i promise you and that would have been hilarious if you just seen here watching <laughs> anyway i uh completely disagree with everything you said about <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no i mean I, I i get it man i get it and and and, the, and he's got name cache alone i mean everybody loves this guy everybody loves this guy and you can throw the the pff stat in anyone's face like i know the yards after contact look tremendous and and I'm all for a good stat, um, but but not if it contradicts like what I saw on the field. Really. Yeah, but your eyeball test is never good. And I know, yeah. and and I know, like you just said that you like Carry On and, and Rojo maybe more as players, but you're going you're going with the situation and, and and everything you just said, and I completely understand that, and I really can't argue too hard against that. But over here in in my camp, like if I like the other dudes as players better, and this is Dynasty. And, and it's not that I, it's not that I just like these other players better. It's almost that I don't like Penny a whole lot, and I'm, I'm about to take some heat for this. But oh, I just, you're going to take some heat. I just, I just like I get he's big and fast, and he can run through weak Mountain West arm tackles. Like okay, but there's also a ton of weak tackles that brings this dude down behind the line of scrimmage. There it is. The heat's but, coming. Heat's coming. So you just never see this dude maul or beast a guy. Like I went back and rewatched oh, games. Oh well, there's like, a couple of clips where he knocks somebody over and runs twenty more yards. Yeah, <laughs> there's also I, a I'm ton of you. clips I, where, I, they, where on, there's a weak little the guy got a finger on his arm pad and and he ran for eighty more yards and that boosted that yards after contact. I'm but, on I'm the, on record of being right there with you and I, I don't disagree with you. I just happened to I started I did started digging and doing came to all this stuff and connected some dots and I. I don't hate the situation. They got a decent amount invested in him, and they're going to give him a, a ton of shots to do what he does. And he's, it's not like he's not talented. He right. is, he is, he is talented, exactly. and when he gets ahead of steam, and, and, and he's pretty shifty. When, once, he, once he gets going, it's, it's really tough for, to bring him down, and I, and I get that. But, like, this San Diego State offensive line just crushed. They did. Like, they were crushing. The fullback was crushing. Everybody was crushing. The 5'8", 176-pound Donnell sure. Pumphrey crushed. Right. Absolutely ago. did yeah. similar things to what but Rashad what you, Penny but what just, you did. just said, Jay Wayne, was there the guy would get a hand on his shoulder pad and then he would break that out and run for eighty yards a couple times. So when somebody runs for a couple eighty yard I runs in college, they're flashy. I get it. And so somebody there's there's flashy, there's some there's some yards after contact stats that make it that drive him up in some people's list. So there's Rashad Penny. There's the production there was, and the there was, PFF stats and everybody was, just took that and ran with it. There was somebody that was all over some Rashad Including Penny. Including the Seahawks. Before the Seahawks made their play, and that's the biggest thing here is what Casey was saying. Part of Casey's foundation of his of his of his stuff there that he was putting together was the offensive line and how bad it was, and we and that's come up on here a couple times about different in the last couple of years. And you know, not many people had as bad of an offensive line as the Seahawks last year as like the Bengals and the and the and the Giants. It was just atrocious. 
But now they're in for a, a new season, reboot the offensive right. line. You can get Dwayne Brown you for get, the whole season. Right. You Dwayne, get Fluker, who isn't a terrible run blocker. Your so, center's kind of coming around. Well, just like the Vikings. Possibly. Two years ago, the Vikings had the worst offensive line in the league, and last year you didn't hear a lot of bad stuff about them. Things happen. You know, you bring in a good guy, you get a cornerstone, and you reboot. You bring some guys in, and, and you get some new stuff going on, and all of a sudden your offensive line ain't the worst in the league anymore. And – uh, on top of all that, you still have Russell Wilson, who is well, that's a fantastic creator and exactly. is very strenuous on a defense. There's, who was doing it all last year, and right. this will help hopefully maybe bring balance back to them, just like we were talking about with the Lions. Like, but I, I, don't get me wrong, like I'm all like I'm okay with trading these picks, just like we talked about at five and six. Like I don't care which of these guys I really end up with. If I don't have Penny in a lot of places, I want some Penny. If I don't have Carry on Johnson in a lot of places. I want some carry on Johnson. If I don't have a Rojo, I might I might trade back and try to get some Rojo. You There's know, nothing wrong with some diversity because I don't of, mind trading don't, in these areas here. Right, right. And I don't care which one I end up with, but I was just I'm making a case for this guy and he's probably jumped Rojo for me at this point in time. I think he should. But and but see and that the I don't reason think I can do it. One of the reasons I blew this name on the pick here before when I called it out, called his name out before we were ready to actually call the one six pick is because his name was coming up so often. I believe in a lot of drafts he's probably going to be gone before the one five. I, I I think with the Seahawks made their play, they come up and take this guy over Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle and even Darius Geis and you know before anybody else after Saquon Barkley, like you said, Russell Wilson he helps the running backs get holes. Like I and I may, maybe it was Mayock. The funniest thing he said all night was the uh, super freak. W- well, other than that, <laughs> <laughs> that the the game plan for the Seahawks was for them to call hike right, and call for hike. Russell Wilson to run for his life. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they they definitely have had tough luck with running backs over there for the last two seasons with injuries and ineffectiveness, and then they let Alex Collins go for some reason. Yeah, I was going to say they didn't need to draft for shot in the first round. They could have just picked up Alex Collins off the waiver. Oh wait, but they, they were the ones that yep, cut. You Alex don't know Collins. what you don't know, and all of a sudden Alex Collins is good somewhere else. So anyway, Russell Wilson can run some boot action now and have a threat when he hands it off to somebody. If Rashad Penny is good, he could be really good with Russell Wilson as his quarterback. And that draft capital is through the roof with Rashad Penny right now. And the person that liked Rashad Penny, the two or three people that were going to like him, even if he was the third or fourth or fifth running back off the board, now they love him. Sure. So that's what I meant when I talked about Darius Geis. If you weren't sure what to do at 1-2 one, or 1-3, one, 1-4, one, and you like okay with any of those guys, if you trade back a couple picks in the draft and the two or three guys that you really wanted only one or two of them even goes because now all of a sudden some other people like the you know the penny stock is out there you know and so there's gonna be some one two one three Rashad Penny getting drafted all day long and so you're that rookie running backs those rookie running backs in the in the rookie draft that you're about to go through is it could be all over the board so don't be surprised if the guy if you're sitting at one three and you're like I wish I want to trade up for Darius guys Give it a chance. Maybe it's Rashad Penny. And if not, you'll be okay, you know? Right. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I, 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 yes, maybe Penny goes two or three. He could. I'm just saying, sure. I, it's, there's people out there pounding Definitely. the table for him right oh, absolutely. now. Right behind and, and, Saquon and it Barkley. Only, it could only grow, you know, as as things move forward. I, I think he's around the, the fifth pick for the most part, but I don't disagree with you at all. I see plenty of people who have him as the two – as the number two running back. Well, they've already come out and said this guy's going to be. Obviously, they made their move in the first round right. over all these they other want guys. Him to but be they, their guy. They're talking three him downs. up. Don't come three down the back. This is our guy. We're going to plug it. We're going to. He needs to get better at pass protection if he's going to stay that's on the field. For, that's they're for gonna, sure. They're going to pound the rock with this guy. Now, whether the well, rock gets pounded is another thing to, to be I, just determined. But he's going to get love, the opportunity. He doesn't love really the way pound it's set up for him, man. I just love. After I did some digging, I know I said all that stuff and I was trying to get it all out, but it's just I just love the way that all this set up for him they they brought in Dixon and then they drafted another p- kind of blocking can can move tight end out there who's just started playing tight end recently he switched to from D tackle to tight end so hasn't quite developed into being a full on like tight ends take a while to develop just anyway. in general and now you get a guy but he but a, a former run D blocker and you got a guy you went out and got another good run blocker and you can set up these bigger packages that Penny is familiar with coming out and and running out of and maybe you can get out of the shotgun a little bit and it's just I think that can really help your guy out here bringing him into a familiar scenario rather than trying to switch up everything he ever knew it's already going to be a whole new world coming up here sure. from the NFL to San Diego State 
So for sure, that's and, and I don't think I think the line is could is, is probably going to be a little more improved than people think. They didn't they didn't do much to to improve the no, line. No, no, they didn't. But Dwayne Brown didn't play till late, and I just said that the center yeah. played pretty decent. He was a second year player last year, I believe. I got you. And they brought in Fluker, who's not the worst. He can he can run block a little. They they got some they got some issues, but it could yeah. be a little better. And you you bring in a bigger set. And, uh, and that would be the last thing to my point is you brought it up. This is the pass protection, like carry on what he is. That's what part. Of, that's a strong part of his game. That's not a strong part of, of Rashad Penny's game. And like they need a running back to pass protect there. And maybe the tide's changing, but I could see, I think there's some risk here. I think this guy could, I mean, this guy could plummet, you know, whereas like the more all every single one of these guys has risks though. And you, I, you just got a guy who, you know, maybe I don't love him as much as the next guy, but I mean, I'm certainly wrong on evaluations all the time. And he's just Sometimes. what you want is as a guy who is pretty athletic and pretty decent. And he's talented, and he can catch a ball. I'll give him that. I'm and he's going to get plenty of opportunity. And and he's got the draft capital invested in him, and all uh, everything just lines up for him to get a heavy workload and to be tried out for at least. A couple of years here, like sure. it's just not going to be a, a one and done unless something crazy happens. Yeah, and we call like CJ Process comes back and he's the best back in the league. Uh, well, I mean, right? My jaws hanging down for ten minutes after the pick, still trying to figure it out. I'm looking at Casey trying to say. I mean, it. We were ten picks later, and I'm I'm still said. I just said so, Rashad Penny, huh? And I'm just trying to figure it out. And then we just and then we just call that Pacific Coast connection. You know, it's like maybe yeah. they're just more familiar with him because they got that Pacific Northwest thing going on and he's in their time slot and they get to see a lot more of him than the Georgia backs. I don't know, but the Seahawks are all in on this guy and I believe that it's it's worth us. I mean, his, this is a – this is – the opportunity is safe and the home run cut is there too because if it hits, it's going to hit big. I like it because I hate the Seahawks and now I don't really like Rashad Penny coming in here just because I don't really love the guy and didn't love the evaluation doesn't mean – that I can't draft the guy, but now I get to really hate this guy. <laughs> the truth and I can out. really hope that he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll take him here at six. And, and uh, I will, and I'm not going to be that upset about it. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a good opportunity with a good, a decent franchise here with a decent defense and a really good quarterback and, yeah, and, a, head, and a head coach that wins. I'd be willing to say 80 to 90% of rookie drafts, he's gone by five or earlier. I've, the hype is real. Probably agree with that. All right, well, I think that'll wrap it up. That's six picks for you, the first half of the first round. We're going to go ahead and call this a wrap. Thanks for listening, everyone. You can find us on Twitter, at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at Jay Wayne's World. If you're on iTunes, please go down and hit that five-star review. You can you can write one if you'd like, but just, just hit those five stars. You don't stars. even have to anymore. It really helps us out. We're also on every other platform of your choice, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, YouTube. Go hit subscribe there. It really helps us out. Please and thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone. Till next time, this has been Mary to the Game.